Day 61 of growing our microbial sandbox by adding random stuff and checking it under the microscope every day. By the way, I don't see the mosquito larvae today. Is the environment too harsh for it to live? Anyway, let's see what microorganisms are growing today. I do see different types of microorganisms, but the number significantly decreased. I assume it's because the salmon piece I added was too large. A large amount of protein was broken down by bacteria into toxic byproducts such as ammonium. I think I need to dilute it immediately. I found this microorganism. Its movement is super fast like a ninja. Even the camera cannot capture its full speed clearly. Okay, remember yesterday we mixed a portion of the sandbox with simulated seawater? Let's check the result. I found most microorganisms died except these small ones. It seems only this species can survive in both fresh and seawater. Let's add more stuff into the sandbox. Kombucha? Before that, let's take some and observe it under the microscope. According to the nutrient label it mentions, Bacillus coagulans. I do see many bacillus everywhere. And also many yeast cells. Let's see what grows in our supersized sandbox tomorrow. Day 62 of growing our microbial sandbox by adding random stuff and checking it under the microscope every day. I still don't see the mosquito larvae today. Maybe it has died or become a pupa. Let's see what microorganisms are growing today. The number of microorganisms is still not that many today. But I do find some fun creatures. Oligocata? It is an aquatic worm. It is closely related to the earthworm. It is usually found in sediments of freshwater environments. An unknown microorganism. It has a unique movement. Let's add stuff into the sandbox. Swab of diarrheal poop. It is disgusting. Before adding it into the sandbox, let's take a look under the microscope. There are many undigested food debris everywhere. Plant cells, maybe from some vegetables. The small, deep purple rod-shaped objects are bacteria. Many of them could be E. coli. I can see many yeast cells. Yeast is common in our gut, especially candida species. Nutella, we add poop-like thing inside again. Sunscreen, before that, I want to test it with a small portion of the sandbox. Let's see what grows in our supersized sandbox tomorrow. Day 63 of growing our microbial sandbox by adding random stuff and checking it under the microscope every day. The sandbox smells exactly like diarrhea now. I really have to dilute it again. Let's see what microorganisms are growing today. There are a lot more yeast cells now. It's becoming a gut simulation. Probiotic yeasts and many types of bacteria are blooming. I found a microorganism that looks like a twisted towel. I don't know what it is, but it has a very long flagellum. Remember the super fast ninja-like microorganisms? They're growing more. The way they move together looks like cockroaches. When one moves, it triggers others to move too, like electric signals in the brain. Okay, let's add more stuff into the sandbox. Remember, we mixed a portion of the sandbox with sunscreen yesterday. Let's check the result. Most organisms still survive. So it seems sunscreen is safe to be added. Duckweed, let's take one and look at its root under the microscope. I see something sticking to the root. It looks like a volcano and something is hiding inside. I guess it's a special species of rotifer because the way it moves is similar. Let's see what grows in our sandbox tomorrow. See you. Day 64 of growing our microbial sandbox by adding random stuff and checking it under the microscope every day. The sandbox looks like pond water now, but with some diarrhea smell. Let's see what microorganisms are growing today. A copod. It is a type of plankton commonly found in both marine water and freshwater. They are an important basic food source for aquatic animals. I found a green microorganism. It is actually Stentor coerileus. It is very large, around one millimeter, and can even be seen without a microscope. It is also a single-celled microorganism. Vorticello again. This one is very large, with many intracellular contents. I found an empty shell of a rotifer, but with a viable egg inside, it keeps rotating. I am looking forward to seeing it hatch a baby rotifer. Let's add stuff. I will keep it short today, because I want to take a break. Toenails. Although they are dirty, I do not have a fungal infection. I think nothing special is living inside. A slice of apple. Keeps microorganisms away from the doctor. Let's see what grows in our sandbox tomorrow. See you! Day 65 of growing our microbial sandbox by adding random stuff and checking it under the microscope every day. Thank God the diarrhea smell has gradually disappeared. Let's see what microorganisms are growing today. I found some gigantic spirochetes. I seldom see bacteria clearly under 100 times magnification. This one is really a large one. I found a predator again. This one is Lacrimaria olor. It has a retractable neck at the front and the neck can extend up to seven times the length of the body. When the tip of the neck touches the prey, it releases toxins that paralyze the prey. It then uses the tip of the neck to grab the prey and eat it. Because of its color, I can tell this one is Stentor coruleus, the giant ciliate that we found yesterday. However, its shape looks totally different. I think this one is abnormally developed. Let's add stuff. Raw beef. Although it is rare, can we add parasites into the sandbox? Cat food. It contains various nutrients and vitamins. Cough syrup. Before adding it in, I think we had better test it with a small portion of the sandbox first. Let's see what grows in our sandbox tomorrow, see you? Day 66 of growing our microbial sandbox by adding random stuff and checking it under the microscope every day. A lot of you want me to look at the bottom of the sandbox. 
Let me buy a longer pipette first. Let's see what microorganisms are growing today. I found a big stentor coruleus again. This time, I was able to zoom in and clearly see its internal structures. There are many vacuoles inside, storing nutrients and metabolic wastes. I found a large ciliate. I guess it is a paramecium species, but I'm not quite sure. I found another species of stentor. Unlike stentor coruleus, this one does not have any green pigment. Actually, non-pigmented stentor is more common. Let's add stuff. Remember we mixed cough syrup in part of the sandbox yesterday? Let's check the result. It seems most microorganisms are still surviving. I think it is safe to add the mixture into the sandbox. Rotten fruit. I think there should be many microorganisms inside. I found some moss again, along with some bark and lichens. Before adding them into the sandbox, let's soak them in water to try and wake any dormant water bears, if they are really there. We can check the results tomorrow. See you. Day 67 of growing our microbial sandbox by adding random stuff and checking it under the microscope every day. I'm sorry I forgot to loosen the cap yesterday. I hope the microorganisms are still doing fine. Let's see what microorganisms are growing today. I found many vorticella again, and I found this one. It should be halteria, a ciliate known for its jumping motion. However, this one was stuck in organic debris. It is fun to see other ciliates get trapped in the turbulence created by stentor. I found another egg. Something was moving inside. I guess this is a rotifer egg. Yesterday I prepared some moss and lichen. Unfortunately, I still cannot find any water bear. I just found some mysterious creatures like this. Please tell me what it is if you know. Anyway, I will just add them into the sandbox. Now let's add more stuff. A water plant. I want to make the sandbox look like an underwater forest. Some of you said the previous plants I added were not duckweeds. So I have prepared real duckweeds this time. Let's see what grows inside tomorrow. See you! Day 68 of growing our microbial sandbox by adding random stuff and checking it under the microscope every day. The sandbox now looks so good. We need to build a kingdom for microorganisms. Let's check under the microscope. Halteria again, but this time you can clearly see its jumping motion. An unknown creature appeared again. I can see many cilia slowly moving on it. It really looks like a swimming oyster. This one swims very fast. Am I the only one who thinks it looks like a swimming boot? Time to add new stuff. Moldy fruit. Before that, I want you to see what mold looks like under the microscope. You can see many spores arranged in a chain. Do you see this broom-like structure? It is a typical characteristic of penicillium species. I think many of you have heard that an antibiotic called penicillin is made by mold. It's true, but not all penicillium species are able to make penicillin. Penicillium rubens and penicillium chrysogenum are the main species that can produce it. Most penicillium species are harmless to human health. Actually, I can see a thicker hypha here. These might belong to other mold species, but I cannot tell what they are. Eggshell. Let's provide more calcium for them. Let's see what grows inside tomorrow. See you. Day 69 of growing our microbial sandbox by adding random stuff and checking it under the microscope every day. I saw a fun idea that I can identify microorganisms like they are Pokemons and make a Pokedex. I mean, it is worth doing. Let's check under the microscope. A lot of extremely small microorganisms are swimming inside the organic debris like mites. Here's the super fast microorganism we have seen before. I found four bean-like microorganisms moving and sticking together. It is cute. Some of you suggested that I can look at the bottom of the sandbox. It seems like there are more microorganisms there, maybe because of the difference in oxygen levels and the concentration of debris. The jumping microorganisms again. I introduced them on day 68. At first I thought it was vorticella, and then I realized that it is actually a mold. This flower bud-like structure is the sporangium, the place in which spores are formed. Many other ciliates as well. Let's add more stuff. Some of you suggested adding more oxygen to the sandbox, so I bought oxygen tablets. I'm sorry that I cannot add bubbler stones because they generate too much aerosol, which is dangerous, especially when we are doing microbiology experiments. Sodium bicarbonate? It can provide carbon sources for water plants and algae. Yogurt again, but a different brand from the previous one. Let's see what grows inside tomorrow. Day 70 of growing our microbial sandbox by adding random stuff and checking it under the microscope every day. I do not want the sandbox to become just an aquarium. Let us add more interesting things later. Let's check under the microscope first. I see a peculiarly slow-moving creature. It is actually Heliozoa. If you look closely, you will see many radiating thread-like pseudopodia making it look like a sun. These help it move and capture prey. You can only clearly observe its movement when I speed up the video. Most of you might think amoebas are just shapeless blobs, but some of them can build shells by using minerals from the environment. The shell remains undegraded for a long time when they die. Time to add more stuff. A large leaf. Someone even suggested that I smash it. Let us check it under the microscope. Most of the fibers are broken down and pieces of plant cells are scattered everywhere. The whole thing turned green. It looks disgusting again. Next gelatin. I hope it will not become microbial jelly. Finally, water from a fish tank. Recently, there has been a lot of algae in the tank. Let us see what grows inside tomorrow. See you.